G'day, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop uh, this uh, Monday morning. It's a um, public holiday here in uh, Western Australia. Um, and uh, it's been a long, long time since I've, um, I've produced a video and uh, that's, that's a story within itself. But what I'd like to do is to introduce my darling wife, Batya, uh, who's been my partner for 50 years. Uh, we've been married 49 years in August, this August will be. And uh, she's the one that uh, keeps me on my toes, looks after my hairdo and all that stuff. Uh, cooking, feeding, as you can see. Uh, that, and, uh, but you say hello to all our friends out there. Hello. That, uh, that we've, uh, we're very lucky. We've got uh, three good healthy children and six healthy grandchildren. So I think we've had some sort of success between us over that time, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Uh, the only problem we've got today is all that curly stuff that ends up in the house and that's a, that's a bane in her backside, but uh, we've got to live with that. Okay, well, without further ado, we'll go on. Uh, there's a lot to cover and uh, thanks, babe. That's it. We've got, a, we've got a lot to cover. The first and foremost um, is the summer bash coming up and uh, this is... Um, uh, this is the, the theme for the new Summer Bash for 2018. Uh, we need your help, we need the sponsorship, we need uh, people to get in there and buy our, um, uh, the shirts and so forth uh, for this Summer Bash uh, because that's what pays our bills to be able to make this happen e each year. And a uh, big uh, shout out to, to Stan and um, uh, and, and the crew uh, behind the scenes, there's lots of them, and uh, Karen in particular, she keeps him uh, uh, under control sometimes. Um, so yeah, Summer Bash 2018 uh, at the Bar Z, and get along, help us out. Now, the other thing I've got is a, a letter. I, I, <coughs> I, got, I got this letter from... Um, uh, James White in um, uh, some county, I couldn't read it, but uh, County Kerry, that's right, in Ireland. Uh, and what, um, what he did was he sent me this parcel and he sent to a few others uh, in our YouTube uh, Facebook uh, channel. Uh, two, two cutters, this is a mini one, this is a 63 mil by one mil. Uh, and the other one is an offset, uh, larger one, uh, four and uh, four and a half on, on three sixteenths on one inch. Uh, they'll come in very handy, and I'll I'll show them when I get to use them. So uh, thank you very very much for that, um, James. And much appreciated, and really good quality stuff uh, that hasn't uh, hasn't struck a blow in anger. We'll look after it for you. Thank you. Next thing is. Uh, I've uh, spent quite a bit of the last few weeks uh, involved in, in the first, uh, first robotics uh, competition, helping out a college here, a local college here in Western Australia, um, to build a robot according to the specifications as per the materials that were supplied in, in the bulk. Um, and that has been quite a, quite a great experience in, in helping out really enthusiastic kids who uh, will be going to uh, Sydney, some of them will be going to Sydney on the 17th and 18th and that's the international um, the, the international first up, uh, first power up uh, the robotics and, and this, is, this is the rule book that uh, we had to work with uh, so anybody wants to get onto the first robotics um, the game uh, this season that's uh, that's really something uh, fantastic. So I wish the, I wish the team all the best in their endeavours. Um, the other the other thing that um, I came across just recently was a couple of these offset um, plunger type setting tools. Um, and this is quite robust and it was quite cheap for uh, for its size and that could be bolted onto anything adjustable head on the end here that you can put whatever you want onto it um, and that's got, that's, got, that's got quite a long stroke 
because it goes all the way across to the other side. You can use, so you're basically getting a double stroke. So you could use it so that it works with one setting, come across and then set it through to another setting. And I can see lots of applications for something like that. Um, and the other one was with a cast iron base. And most of these were extremely cheap. I couldn't believe how cheap they are. Well built. Um, and uh, also have a very long stroke. Thread at the end here that you can bolt anything you want into. Uh, very nice. A shout out to Marcus Wilson. Uh, dropped by you know, one of the, as, as he does. Bought in one of these heavy, these wide sharpies. Very, very good. I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm not sure whether I showed it in one of my previous uh, videos, but amongst my um, uh, recent ap acquisitions for um, uh, for my hammer collection was this hammer, which is actually also doubles as a bottle opener. It was probably a promo thing that was made at one stage or other, uh, but anyway, that's not a bad little item. Uh, doing a job with the, with the easy out uh, and so forth. My left hand drill broke, the top, the top broke off it. That needs to be repaired. Amongst the, the latest acquisition for the hammer com collection was this item. Um, and it's not a hammer actually, it's a punch. It's a, uh, a blacksmith's punch. And uh, so that's a nice little item that'll uh, be hung up here when I find a place for it. Uh, my friend Mark uh, brought these along uh, for me to to use, and they are uh, the da David Brown um, floating uh, floating reamers, and they are they are absolutely brilliant. They're well well built, very well manufactured. These are the floating uh, cutters in the reamers, and it's actually got his microscope. Uh, the micro adjustment here. So the this this first wheel adjusts the uh, inboard outboard of the um, tool, and the second one can work up against it, and also work as a lock. Uh, or you can just set it so that it's going to be at that point. Bring the other one back to it, uh, and that adjusts that. And these are still these, these this can float. They float up and down. They're made by David Brown. There's a, there's a series here, up to this one, the largest one. They were made in England. Um, I can't see the name, the size of this one, but it'll be on there. So then we've got those. <coughs> Another thing, I've got some. I've got this cut, and now I've just got to trim it, and that'll go on my three-jaw chuck, on the ten-inch three-jaw chuck. Um, as a, 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 I'm going to drill some holes in it, put some uh, bolts in, and that'll be able to adjust forward and backwards if I want to ca capture something close to the edge, the ends of the um, <coughs> of the jaws, and that gives a wide capacity for this this item because I have an 80 mil or three inch bore, so uh, it's it's very good for many things, but sometimes you just want to have that little hole, uh, and so this will allow me to do that. The last item uh, was I, uh, I received these two uh, balancing two balancing wheel castings. Now what I'd done was I'd, I'd made I built a blower a blower facility, a blower a complete blower uh, radial actual uh, actual fan excuse me blower and um, I needed to balance it. I took it to the uh, to the people that actually ordered it from me, and I said, "Look, I can't balance it. I don't have the tools." And they said, "Well, we've got a pair, of, a set of balancing wheels. You're quite, hap we're quite happy to give them to you. We bought them some years ago, never used them, and they donated those two wheels to me. So these wheel sets to me. So that's uh, that that opens up another uh, possibility for me." Okay, so what we're going to do now, and the general purpose of this uh, video, is to show you this item here um, behind us. Uh, 
this, uh, this item is uh, part of a pasta, a pasta machine. I, I do a lot of work for pasta, for pasta factories. Uh, this particular one here, uh, it's called a filling tube for a 540 machine. Now, uh, I, I don't know how the whole machine goes together. What I do know is that um, what I do know is that the, uh, they're very complicated, some of them. They have, there are a lot of mechanical parts to them, gears, motors, gear motors, drives, uh, and, um, and, and some very tight tolerances, some very heavy loads in them. The, the pasta is, uh, can be pretty heavy uh, power requirements. So, um, and of course, they're, they're, because they're heavy components and they've got to pull the machines apart to clean them on every run or every day or every whatever whatever it is, completely strip them down and clean them. Uh, they they do have a lot of problems with um, uh, these things getting knocked about, bashed, uh, and of course uh, operators um, in general. It doesn't matter where what what uh, they're doing, or what company or what business they're in, so tend to go for the hammer quicker than than is required. And then that has a cascading effect to the problem. So quite often I'll get a machine come in and I really need to go back and look at the root cause of the, the degradation that I find and try and go back there and remedy it from, from using uh, first principles rather than just doing a, 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 a small repair. So quite often it'll be a case of, well, where's the rest of the machine? How does it work? Um, and that sort of thing, rather than just be in a cocoon and say, okay, I'll repair that. And, and quite often that can lead to just continuously having issues and that, uh, being, that the, and it hasn't solved the real problem. So I'm going to show you here, I've done a lot of work in the last uh, two days on this, and I'm going to show you this uh, uh, interesting concept and apparatus. I'll just maybe pan in a little bit. Uh, so you can see a bit closer. Let's see if I can pair it a bit. And so what we're going to, so uh, uh, maybe not. Okay. So what we have here, this is a this is a removal tool. Uh, this is a tube with a block on the end. It has a, a threaded bar. Now I, uh, last week I changed that threaded bar from. Uh, a fine thread to a coarse thread because they're complaining about the, having to work it through this distance um, and to, to, to remove the, the, the working parts outside of this tube which fits into all sorts of other parts of the machine. So in order to, uh, because when they go to pull this out of course the pasta's in there, it's very tight and that, so this, um, this bolt has uh, a smaller thread in here which engages in, in the part inside and, um, and then you know, so they've got to just fit that up this, when, you, when they, they bring it up this is what they'll see uh, they, they get that centered up screw that up screw that bolt in and then use use this to um, remove it so I've, I've, made it, I've managed to speed this up so it's a lot easier for them. I really don't need to use it to pull it out the whole way because um, it's, it's not, it doesn't have any pasta. So what we'll do is we'll take that bolt out. So that's, that's, the, that's the, the bolt. Uh, it had a, uh, a brass bush. I machined that out. I made this bolt larger. Uh, of a 5 TPI that I had uh, <coughs> and, and, and welded a nut at the back here rather than go to the trouble of making a new bush. Uh, machined it down and put a, uh, the same thread which is a, 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 a 12 mil thread that fits in there. So I'll take that out of the way. I'll take this out of the way. And then we'll withdraw and you can understand that this is tight. It's it, when they pull it out, it's inside that inside that tube still. All stuffed to that, so they've got a, a lot of heavy handling to do. Uh, but here lies a problem that needs a separate solution. 
So inside here is, is this part. Now, this part is made of several. Um, it's got a, a keyway underneath that fits into a, a, key, a key slot here that fits into a key uh, in this tube. And um, of course, the idea, the idea of this is to is, is it rotates. And it's got this key here that stops it from rotating beyond that uh, about 130 degrees, 140 degrees, something like that. So I'm going to pull it apart and then I'll show you how, what, what was the root cause of the problem, what was the issues. Uh, that. So in order to do that, we just take these screws out, come on the other side. Uh, I'll bring that round a bit further. And that comes out. That's the key that I made. Um, and it's got, I put a, made a dowel as well here. Um, so that's, that's the key. We can talk about that. Um, and now we're able to remove um, this shaft out of here. This shaft is, is hollow but up to that point there and this is the drive and that obviously drives it and turns it. You've got the slots in here where the key goes in and these slots here which work to feed, uh, feed the material. I've, it, that, uh, I've, I've assumed that gives a certain amount of dose closes, dose closes, etc. Uh, I don't know exactly. Now, this was badly hammered about, very badly hammered. So I've machined it all the way down. As you can see here, how badly it was pitted and broken away. And the same is in here, in the bore, has the same problem. So the the issue the issue was, uh, from what I can ascertain, not. Not having been told about it, but just by my own internal investigation. Um, so, this is the other part. This part here, this part here, was had a had a a, a, a cutting out of here. So that unit had been sliding backwards and forwards, and grooved out. And so I machined this back. And I machined, cleaned up all of this and machined the both ends as best I could, uh, trying not to take too much off. You can, you can see all around has been damaged. And I machined this bush out and replaced it with a new bush because this is the area where the, where, the main wear was. Um, so I put in uh, a bush a, a slightly tighter to be able to fit on that shaft. So there had been a lot of work cleaning up, machining it outside, making a new bush, fitting the bush in, um, etc. Now that's now this part here, and part of the problem was it had its own, it had its original key. Well actually, going to go the other way. I'll show you here. Um, now, the keyway that was in there is, is this key, this key here, and you can see how badly it's been damaged and, and uh, all over, and it had two shims underneath it as well. Obviously, it had worn over time and it was to lift it up. So. And you can see here the difference. The difference in the length between the two. Because the, the, problem, the problem was... Let's see if I can get it a bit closer there for you. We're going to run out of uh, battery in a minute. But we'll come in a bit closer and then we'll have to say goodbye. Um, 
was that was too short, and this whole thing would move backwards and forwards, and that's what wore all this away. So that's why I made this one longer, and with a key in it, so it could only go with one way. And that then fits in there, and that has very little movement backwards and forwards, and that could all articulate to both sides without moving backwards and forwards. So root cause was, they had, there was broken threads in here as well by the way, I repaired those threads. In fact I made new, new positions, new threads in new positions. So you can see that how um, that is, this one I had to move the, the drill bits out, that's why I made the key as well. Um, I'm running out of uh, battery for some reason or other. Um, so all the best and thanks very much for uh, for uh, what's the name uh, partaking in my little uh, endeavours of the weekend. Don't forget we've got black books at the back there and Gem Trek. Uh, you get on and help all our uh, you, my YouTube um, creators out there to um, to get to the bash and, and show our wares. Thank you.